I'm Dr. Jenny Moore, Director of Institute Sustainability at the British Columbia Institute of Technology, and I'll be presenting strategies for energy and climate management at the British Columbia Institute of Technology. British Columbia Institute of Technology, also known as BCIT, comprises six schools located across five campuses in southwestern British Columbia, Canada. These schools provide a diverse range of technologies and skills training in subject areas including business, computing and academic studies, construction and the environment, energy, health, and transportation. One of the key features of BCIT's approach to energy and climate management is to pursue the campus as a living lab of sustainability. This enables students, faculty, and staff to innovate and practice new technologies and approaches on our campus. Of course, we have to observe existing rules and regulations, that's for sure. But the campus as a living lab model also engages students and faculty to think about and bring leading practices onto campus and to work with our staff to see if we can actually innovate and demonstrate what we, do, what we teach. So this is a way for us to practice what we teach and learn as we go, learn by doing, which is a hallmark of our applied education uh, learning at BC. So for energy and demand management, uh, we look at how can we shape demand as opposed to traditional approaches which focus on supply. BCIT's facilities has a long history of energy management. Since the 1990s, we've been harvesting the savings and em employing them back into new energy um, conservation efforts. But we reached a certain point where technology couldn't um, give us any more. We'd already optimized everything we could. So we turned to people and we started to focus on shaping our behaviors. And that's the beginning of our demand side management approach, which started in 2006. Through our green team and various other initiatives, we engaged people in fun campaigns, focusing on turning out the lights, conserving heat, all kinds of things. And you can see here, we're following a demand management triangle, which we call our pyramid, that we call the four R's of sustainable community energy planning. First, we focus on reducing demand, then we reuse waste heat, then renewable heat, and finally renewable electricity. And I'll walk you through how that's played out in implementation at BCIT. This for our approach is also critical to our sustainable energy management credential that we teach at BCIT. When we started looking at shaping demand, we were very fortunate to partner with our utility, BC Hydro, that provides all of our electricity. Through BC Hydro, we hired an energy manager and we agreed to partner where the energy manager was working in our sustainable energy management curriculum, applying these concepts both to our campus and to our education. So it's a perfect campus's living lab, lab example where we're practicing what we teach. The second base in the pyramid after focusing on behavior change is to reuse waste heat. In British Columbia, fossil fuels comprise the majority of our heating load. Here's an example of how we're doing that. In our computing technologies, our servers generate a lot of heat. We simply can vent that heat into classrooms. And so instead of using more energy to provide cooling to the servers, the servers are actually providing their waste heat to the classrooms, offsetting the fossil fuels that we normally would need. This approach helps us save money, reduce fossil fuels, and reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. The next level in the pyramid is renewable heat. So now what we wanna do is look at other ways that we can generate renewable energy on site. Here, for example, we teach carpentry and joinery. In our programs, this education produces wood waste. Wood waste is uh, something that we can use as a fuel source. So by harvesting our wood waste from our programs and being very careful about making sure that it's clean fuel, we're able to repurpose it in a burner and um, generate more heat that way. And this heat is actually used to provide heat to the classrooms in which these programs are taught. And finally, we use renewable electricity. Here's an example of our solar oasis where we're producing electricity to provide fuel, or ex example, electricity to our vehicle fleet. And in the future, we may be able to also harvest this energy to provide on-campus lighting or other electricity needs for computing. So you can see how slowly we're moving towards a circular economy approach by following a demand-side management strategy. In our School of Construction and Environment, we went even further, and with the Living Lab in mind, we tried to see how far we could take existing technologies towards the goal of reducing our energy and materials consumption by 75%. We chose 2009 as our baseline, 
and selected the seven buildings in which the school teaches its courses. Between 2009 and 2016, we were able to generate $4 million in grant funding, achieve a $200,000 annual savings from energy efficiency and energy demand management pro programs, engage 12 educational programs and 250 students who were all involved in our solutions, and we achieved a 50% reduction in our energy use during that time period. Now our goal is to take the same approach across all of our campuses. We also were able to institutionalize sustainability at BCIT, and in 2014, BCIT adopted its first sustainability policy, and it has seven goals. These include becoming a climate neutral or greenhouse gas neutral uh, institution, to also become an, a new renewable net energy producer, achieve zero waste, become water balanced, ecologically restored, socially responsible, and universally accessible. With these goals in mind, BCIT was ready to tackle a bigger agenda and take this Factor 4 Campus of Living Labs demand side management energy approach campus wide. Today, we're aligning our policies and operations for achieving a ambitious targets. We've set a 33% reduction target of our energy use below 2007 levels by 2023, and we also want to get to 80% reductions by 2050. These goals are hard to achieve and they're accelerating all the time. For example, the International Panel for Climate Change is calling for a zero emissions target by 2050. But we know we can get there because we've already demonstrated that in seven years we could reduce our energy and emissions by 50%. So we have a few decades to get the other 50% dealt with. Through a variety of ongoing engagement with our faculty, staff, and students, we're providing real-time energy dashboards, new in, um, solutions for solar and uh, heating. Here's a solar heating array on one of our rooftops. And we're slowly adapting our campus to meet our goals for a zero emissions future. So thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them.